My name is Jerry Marshall. And, uh, well, welcome to our show. Uh, today, well, to help me explain the techniques is my daughter, Sherry. And if you're ready, well, let's start. We're going to do an old barn today. And uh, I like old barns and buildings. They're fun. And I've started out here already mixed me pre-mixed a color. I've got a little red, I mean, excuse me, I've got a little white here with some blue in it, just a touch of blue, and it's ready white. And I'm going to go in here like this, and I'm going to plow around on the sky a little bit. I need, it, that needs to be just a little more blue than that. Let's, let's, let's make a nice blue sky. I'm going to, yeah, there we go, that's better. And I'm going to put a little of that blue around here and kind of dash it around. We're going to have some trees and greenery. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on this background because um, I want to get right into painting the barn because that's mainly what you want to see. So I'll just make this, keep the sky really simple and I'll keep the trees fairly simple. Okay, there's, that's about enough of the blue. Now I've taken, over here I have um, yellow ochre, white, yellow ochre, and just a touch of cad red, or just a touch of red. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to I'm going to give this make this a warm sky. This is going to be a real nice, nice sky. Filling in those areas in between the blue, using a fairly wet mixture, because I want to get a nice blend on it. Come over here. Don't worry if you overlap your bar a little bit; so it doesn't hurt a thing. Okay, something about like that, and maybe a little more down in here. Now I'm going to take a big blending brush and I'm going to go over that whole thing, blend it out nice and soft. Like I say, I'm keeping it very simple. That's enough of a sky. That's all the sky we need. Now, next I'm going to go in here with, um, I want to get some trees in there. I'm going to try this brush. This is a, something different. It's a round. You just want to try and see how I like it. All right, this is burn umber. I'm going to add just a little bit of black to it, make it just a little darker. And I'm going to go in here and put the trunks in first. Put a trunk in there, tree trunk right about there. I'll give it a little split, right about like so. I'm going to run a little tree back in here like this. branches off to the sides will do. Not too many. Don't have to get too carried away with this. In fact, this tree isn't even going to need much in the way of highlights because I'm going to put so much greenery over the top of it that you're hardly going to see this tree anyway. Put a few little distant trees over there in the background. Do the same thing over here. I'm going to have one peeking out from around the side like this and maybe one right in there like that. That's enough. While I have that same color, though, while I have that nice dark color, I am going to go in here like this, and right under the eave of this barn, I'm going to cut that eave in, because it's going to give me a nice stopping point there. I'm going to cut that eave in, like so. Perfect. That's the dark, it's that darkest area. <clears throat> it's almost black brown with just a touch of black in it, but it looks almost black. There. It's a nice start. And I'm going to do the same thing inside here like this. I'm going to go in here and start roughing in this background. I want to do this. The reason I want to do this, I want this to be real dry before we start the front. Now, when I put this, when I put these uh, boards back here, I'm going to paint them just like boards and allow a little bit of the, of the uh, background to show through them. So it looks like you're looking through the barn and you're actually seeing some um, cracks showing between the boards, you see, like that. Put in a couple over here like this. You can do a few up here like this. I'm going to allow, allow those cracks just to show between there. A little bit more up here. And I'm going to have an old crack there. I'm going to have a crack down there. And 
back in this area here, this is all going to be dark, so I'm just going to go back in here and just wash that right in dark, all that back area. There we go. I like that so far. See, I'm letting it, I'm just letting it be kind of rugged looking. It doesn't have to be exact right now because if we're going to detail it. We're going to be putting other colors on the top of it and all. But for now, I want to get this on so it can be drying. Shoot, I'm just going to paint right over those boards because the boards can be painted back in. And a little bit on each of the windows. <clears throat> this could be a little darker back here. Like that, a little better. And we'll get both of these windows kind of now that'll have a chance to dry, see, between now and when we go in and we start to do the barn. Now I'm going to go back to the trees. And for the trees, I'm just going to do something real simple. First of all, I'm going to come over here and we use a little bit of green, some white, a little yellow ochre in it. I want, I want, I want just a nice bright, nice bright color here. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to come down here on the foreground and I'm going to smash a little of this light color in, and then I'm going to bring some dark colors in around it so it looks like there's light areas where the uh, sun's, you know, shining through and hitting it. There's going to be some light areas, and it's going to be intermixed with some nice dark greens. While I have the same color on my brush, I'm going to go up in here, and I'm going to make these trees like, like they're rim lit. Now, what I mean by rim lighting, R-I-M, rim. I'm trying to work along with Sherry there so she can get that sign properly is that you will see actually see dark in front and then you'll see just a little bit of this light showing through behind now we go to the dark and for dark i'm just going to use some some straight either sap green or hooker's green either one whichever makes no difference and i'm going to mix up a nice dark color i even added a little i even added a little black to it <clears throat> now this is what You'll notice when I come in here like this, see, I let a little bit of the, of the light stuff show around the outside like that. And that allows that uh, effect of rim lighting, what I was talking about, rim lighting, see. Go back in here. Do the same thing over here. See, I'm letting just a little of the rim showing. It, it almost gives you the illusion that um, the uh, leaves out on the edges are catching the light. Well, in fact, that's, that's what it's intended to do. Now we can go down in here like this. We can start pounding in these areas down here in the foreground. Okay, right in between where I put this light now, I'm going to start putting some dark in there. I'm just going to first just initially get it in there like this. A little bit down here in front. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to use a um, stabbing motion. I'm going to use several greens. I'm going to mix several greens together here to get this color. I'll show you that. I want to show you that stabbing motion. All right. First, I'm going to get a fill like this. I want a little dark around the barrel over here like that. Now, taking your brush like this and holding it down, just you smash it. Just kind of smash it in there. And uh, some people say scrunch it. Whatever, <laughs> just so you get it on there. But if you scrunch it right or smash it correctly and kind of push it up, you can get the illusion now, see, of grasses. It starts making little myriad grasses, myriad of grasses that show up in between that light that I was telling you about. Now it looks like the light's kind of dashing down through there. Now we've got a road in there. So for that road, I'm going to take some burnt umber, a little bit of yellow ochre, put it together and just a touch of white that makes kind of a tan and for the road I'm just going to start right in here like this just kind of dash in this area of road right in here right in front like so by the way I didn't explain them um, these are called foliage brushes this 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 big brush that I've been using that's a that's called a foliage brush for making this type of foliage. All right, I'm, I picked up a little bit of straight burn umber. I'm going to tuck it up underneath that edge. All right, 
You can't have it unless you have some wagon tracks through it. So you get wagon tracks through it by doing this and this. And you can take a, a, a twiggy brush or a liner brush. This is more technically correct. Take a liner brush and use a little nice wet mixture here and just go in with some of your greens here and you can put some individual strokes. Just bring out some individual strokes of grass. Let me get some water in this, make this a little wetter. Usually this paint runs best if it's about the consistency of the ready white. If you can get it to that consistency, it seems to run the best. And we put a few of those in there like that and we can rough in the barrel and a few things. And I'm gonna have to throw a hair dryer on this now and start getting this a little dry before I go in to start to detail out the barn. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna get this barrel roughed in here first. I just roughed in. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and uh, maybe put a few more grasses in and then we'll come back and we'll tackle this barn. I'll be right back. I'm gonna put just a few more of these grasses in. I'm gonna continue on. You see, I've added a few of the grass strokes. I showed you how to do them before we, we took the break there to dry this. But see, now that it's dry, those grasses will lay right on top. Before, they were kind of blending right into the, um, into the background because it was still a little bit wet. All right, now we're ready to actually paint the barn. So let's go for it. All right, I'm gonna use this brush here. It's just a flat uh, filbert type brush and I'm gonna wet it and I'm gonna start out with a little bit of burnt umber straight and I'm gonna go down this side now the sun's gonna be hitting this from the front so what I'm gonna have here is I'm gonna have shadows that come down on the cracks of the boards here in the front you're gonna see a little shadow for, of the eave coming down just a ways so I'm gonna make each brush stroke just exactly like a board you see, I'm, I'm, I'm actually painting them like the individual boards. That's a real good rule. If you, if you can remember to do that, you'll get good results when you paint barns and old buildings like that. If you just paint everything just exactly like it would appear in nature. Now, this side here actually is going to be more in shadow, so I can really go in there and uh, make that even darker yet. Yeah, that's there. That, that works real good. So I'm going to make the top real dark. See how I'm doing each individual board, like so. This is going to be the eave. Now, this is going down the side. See, I'm, I'm dry brushing, allowing the brush just to pull some of the texture of the canvas that you can see through underneath. Now, that makes it look more realistic, you see. It makes it look more like real boards. You can cut it in like that. You can cut it in across there by just lightly running your brush over it. You can get those edges to clean right up. Okay, we're coming right along pretty good here. Let me get this in first. Then we'll come back probably and put some kind of highlight on it later on. Right now I want to get that in. Then I'm going to take some yellow ochre. I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that mixture. Burn umber, yellow ochre, little white. I'm even going to put some regular yellow in it. I want that to, want that to be a fairly bright color. And I want it a little warmer than that, so I'm going to put just a little red in it. There. Oh, that looks nice. That, that's, that's what I'm looking for. It's a nice old weathered look. Okay, with this color now, I'm going to continue on from where I left off with the shadow, you see. I'm going to continue right on down. Each, each stroke is going to be individual, just like that. See how I'm letting the weathered letting the weather look show through. Got a couple cracks in this barn. Now I'm, I'm overlapping it just slightly at the top to give it a nice oh, even transition there of color down so that it looks nice and even. Uh, we're doing great here. This is just coming right along. We'll just keep this all filled in here. Now I'm going up the top and I'm overlapping just a little bit. We need a cross piece across here. There. And a little 
little more, fill this, fill this bottom up just a little more here, like so. Notice I flip my brush over every once in a while too, that helps. Fill it up. Okay, a little bit over on this side, right here. There. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-hit this just a little bit here to brighten it up. There, that's looking pretty good so far. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the roof and then I'm gonna come back to this side this barn. I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to actually come back and put um, some little cracks in the board. I'm going to darken this edge up just a little bit where it goes down here. I want that just a little bit darker back in there. There. Maybe a little darker on the windows too. And a little darker back in here. There. I like that much better. See, now you get that illusion that you really actually can walk right back into that building. All right, while that's drying, before I put the detail on it, I'm going to go on in here now and I'm going to underbase the top of this roof. This is going to work out just right because when I put the base on the roof, then I'm going to be able to come back, put the detailing on here. By that time, the roof will be dry and I'll be able to put the detailing on the roof. So I'm going to, for this, I'm going to use um, almost a burnt uh, sienna straight, practically straight. This is going to be like a rusted out tin roof. I'm going to make it like like tin. There. Like that. See, you can actually paint it in little uneven strokes like that. It gives it a little more rustic appearance. Take it right up here to the top. Put a little bit there. A little bit there. Yeah, that's looking good. That's one of the nice parts. That's one of the versatilities or why it is, uh, why the, um, the acrylic paint is so versatile. Because sometimes you can use it thin, sometimes you can use it thick. You can, get all, you can vary your results. And because it's quick drying, you can come right back in behind yourself. It doesn't take much time, much waiting time. And you can actually start detailing it out. Now I'm going to use my mall stick here. And the old clock on the wall shows me that I've probably got about five or so more minutes. And I'm going to just throw some detail into this guy. First thing I want to do is get some cracks in there for the old boards. Now, these cracks do not have to be real uniform. I kind of wiggle my hand just a little bit and let them just sort of um, old skip and miss, hit and miss, you know, uh, leaving them like that, kind of old and rustic looking. See how I'm, see how I'm wiggling my hand up and down? That will um, cause your brush to deposit paint and then not deposit paint. You see certain spots. There, that's coming along just great. It's detailing out real fine, just the way I want it to look. You know, if we had a, you know, if we had a one hour show, for instance, we could probably show you a lot more detailing. But I, this gives you the idea and gives you the, the um, procedures. And you can take it from there and at home, you can use a lot, you know, use up a lot more time, make these look a lot more detailed if you want. We have a book out, by the way, that has all of these, all 13 of the paintings that we're doing in this series, we put into one book. And uh, you might find it interesting. Much more detailed instruction than I have time to do here today. Okay, we need some on the back side. Of course, these are going to have to be a little darker, so I'm going to add a little black. In fact, I'm going to go in practically with straight black. It's going to have just a touch of burn umber in it. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back here like this. And see, I'm going to hit a few of these boards back here. Hey, look at that. That's really bringing it to life, huh? You can really do this. You know, if you follow these simple steps, you can... Um, you know, you can paint barns, covered bridge, any old buildings using the same method. Now, I always like to put just a little cut line right here at the top like this to just kind of finish off this roof. Now, I said I was going to make this an old tin roof, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a little bit of a blue wash, just a slight blue wash over this. I want to make
make that post there just a little bit stronger. Oh, one other thing I can do while I'm here. It's got some fence posts here in front, so I can go ahead and I can put these fence posts in here now. Because, see, they, they overlap, so I just throw an old fence in there like that. And uh, maybe a couple bars are going this way and maybe one over here like that. It's kind of neat. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if this is dry enough. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, I'm going to make a, a light blue here. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll just use this blue I used in the sky. I've already got it here on the brush. It's going to work out fine. I'm just going to sort of tap off the excess paint so it's rather dry. I want to use a rather dry brush. See, I'm just patting it on a rag. Okay, I'm going to come down in here like this, and I'm just going to sweep this just slightly in the shape that the roof actually is. I'm going to put just a little tiny hint of that blue in there. Let some of the red show through. See, that's just dry enough. It's pulling it off the brush. Now, you saw how fast that dried. It dried just in the time since we, um, since we painted it until now. Now, we, n we need a little detail in that. So what I'll do here now is I'll take my uh, liner brush and a little bit of dark. I'm going to go back to my mall stick to steady my hand. And I'm going to, I'm going to wiggle my hand on purpose right here. I'm going to make just like an up and down sort of joggy stroke. See, I'm going to do it very, very quick. I'm just going to wiggle the brush, wiggle the brush, wiggle the brush. See, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. In fact, it's better if it isn't because most tin roofs are not perfect. And then I'm going to put some divisions in it, you see like so, like individual little sheets. Come down here like that. Maybe one right there. Well, now you notice I'm changing the, the slope of, of as, the, as the roof slopes out, I'm changing the slope of the uh, tin, the way the tin's laying. Okay. And, uh, oh, I see one last thing, and we've got just enough time to put it in. I, I like this. I like to do this. I make a wet mixture first to burn umber. It's just a nice, wet, a real, very wet mixture. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to put a shadow on the wall for a ladder. Now, that's the shadow, see, where it would be casting up against the wall. Then I'll come in here with just a little darker mix, and I'll come down this way, and I'll put that, put that ladder right down like that. Look at that. And then we'll put the cross pieces on there. We'll put a little highlight on that ladder. Sign our name, and we're going to, we just about have this one whipped. All right, a little highlight. Uh, could be yellow ochre, and how about some white? That'll work just right. Okay. We'll put the little highlight down on top of that ladder. A little bit over here on this side. Uh, I got rid of a little too much of my shadow on the side of it, so I'm going to have to go back in and hit it again. There we go. So I'm just using that mall stick as a guide just right down the side of the... Okay, <clears throat> a couple of cross pieces. Boy. Pretty good little bar in there. Put a couple little cross bars in there like so. See how neat that looks with the, with the shadow uh, hitting it? We've got... Um, Enough time we could put a little highlight. Let's put a little. Let's let's hit a little highlight here on these on these um, fences, fence posts, something like that, and a little here, a little on a cross piece, a little on a cross piece. We'll hit it in between there like that. One over there, one over there. Hey, and maybe a little on the sawhorse. I always like to put a little sawhorse in there. What's a farm without a horse? And um, then we um, can take a little tiny bit of white, just straight white. I always like a little life in my picture. I put some birds in the sky, so I'm going to come in here like this, and I'm just going to put a couple little chickens right down here. I'm just, see, they got the little red heads on them. They're kind of cute. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I see one spot I missed. Hitting a little highlight that needed just a little highlight inside of here like that. And you know what else will work? I mentioned this before, and that's blue back shadowing. You can put just a little tiny bit of blue back shadow, a couple of little spots in here. You sometimes just dresses it up, touches it off pretty good. I don't see anything else we need to do to that one except sign it. And uh, 
you got yourself a picture. I'm through. And I think till the next time, well, we'll see you later.